So we're here at another really cool thing to do in Naples with these beautiful ornate designed pillars and orange trees surrounding you. And this is easily the most beautiful ornate church I've ever been to. The most famous pizzeria in Naples. It's been open since 1870. We're gonna get a famous marinara pizza. Widely regarded to be one of the best pizzas in Naples. So that means one of the best pizzas in the world. We're super excited. Each marinara pizza was only five euros and it was massive, but most importantly, very tasty and delicious in Napoli. So that was Lampica Pizzeria de Michele. Famous pizzeria, probably one of the most oldest in Napoli. It's only a broken record. So if you want to come, there's normally a huge line. We might have to wait for an hour to get in. Come right when it opens between 11 and 12. No wait at all, and you can get right in there and try out the famous pizza for yourself. After starting the day off right with a massive Neapolitan pizza, it was time to visit something on our list, which is one of the most picturesque parts of Napoli. Thank you. All right, Wanderers, so we're here at another really cool thing to do in Naples, which is a little bit north of the center of the town. You could find yourself in Santa Chiara, which is a really gorgeous courtyard and church that was actually erected back in the 1300s, so it's over 800 years old. And most of it was actually uh, destroyed or damaged during um, World War II, during some of the bombings. And it's a gorgeous little area with lots of historic and religious paintings along the walls and these gorgeous columns that go along this little alleyway with a nice big courtyard area, which I'll show you here in a second. These beautiful ornate designed pillars and orange trees surrounding you, which is a really peaceful place to walk and also see some history, really cool thing to do in Naples as well, besides the pizza. Guys, this is torture for me to see all these fresh orange trees with these oranges that have just fallen to the ground. But you can't touch anything here. Otherwise, I would want to grab one and take a nice juicy bite out of it from that nice volcanic Vesuvius soil. <laughs> Another really cool part of the decoration is obviously they have these um, pillars which are octagonal, so eight-sided, and they're covered with some gorgeous um, flowers and fruits and different fresh looking designs. And then they're connected by these beautiful benches which have the same color scheme, but they're actually depicting many famous mythological scenes. So if you're into mythology and maybe you know some of the stories, it's really cool to check out those different images and see if there's anything you recognize, or just appreciate them for the beautiful art that they are. Right, Vanessa? She's impressed, guys. She really is an art snob, so she said, why aren't we at the Vatican? Just be sure not to sit on these guys. And the great thing about this place is the quarry art itself is relatively big. There's also a museum area to check out. There's a bookstore. There's a cafeteria to get some food, all for the price of uh, six a little bit more than that at six euros to enter. It seems to be very quiet, especially if you come earlier in the morning or towards the end of the day, which I'm doing closer towards dusk. Not even at sunset yet, I have a lot of time to just explore this in total peace. It feels like this is how it's meant to be enjoyed, in peacefulness without somebody blabbering and recording a video in the process. After spending a lot of time walking around the courtyard and observing the cloisters outside, it was time to enter the museum where you can see many things on display that are artifacts and remnants from the original Santa Chiara. Right behind the museum, there's actually an archaeological zone, which you can just walk around and explore very quickly. It showcases a bit of an old structure where there used to be a bathhouse. It did blow me away, but it's worth a visit while you're here. They will even turn the lights on for you at night, but they do close around 5.30, so we're running towards the end of our time here, but at least we have a cool flavor to the scene right now. 
They also have an informative video on display if you're interested in checking that out. And make sure, don't forget to go around the corner and walk inside of the church. In the nearby Piazza del Gesù Nuovo, there was an absolute gem of a building, the prettiest church that I have seen thus far in my life. Are you wondrous? I'm whispering really quietly because this is a church, but we are at <laughs> the Chiesa del Gusso Nuovo. And this is easily the most beautiful and well-decorated ornate church I've ever been to. Insane. The building of Chiesa del Gesù Nuovo started back in 1470. It's a very old, but very magnificent, grand, ornately detailed church that honestly took my breath away, is a must see whenever in Naples, I promise you. And right by those churches in Santa Chiara, you can wander down, oh look, it's Detroit, uh, a collection of streets making up Spacca Napoli, which actually means split Napoli, because it splits Napoli into a south and a north part. It's a really cool, fun street to wander down and see what's up, lots of different places to eat and shop and all that sort of thing. A fantastic restaurant to eat out at on Spacca Napoli is going to be Tandem Ragu, and they are a bit of an institution here in Naples, a really cute homey feel. I got the pasta with vegan sauce, and Vanessa got the pasta with the vegan ragu. Bon appetito, que delicioso! Hey guys, we are here on a ferry and we are going on an adventure. Finally, we are arriving at our destination, the beautiful island of Ischia. All right, so first impressions of Ischia. Because it's the off season, it's a little bit more quiet. It's the pastel colors you'd expect in uh, Southern Italy. So far, good impressions. So the first stop of the day in Ischia is my new crib. Honestly, this is one of the most incredible, no, it's the most incredible castle I've ever seen with my eyes. It's very green. There's lots of little orchards, lots of little fruit trees with oranges, lemons, and even tomatoes growing. This island, Ischia, in the Mediterranean in Italy, reminds me very much of the images that you would expect to see with maybe a Santorini. We have a ferry to catch at 520, but we're already running out of time as it is, and we don't have what it we need to to spend an overnight here. All right, everybody. So we did not make the ferry back to Napoli. 